A call from a past customer, a fellow that I did a gold wing for a while back, a couple years ago, I guess. And he said suddenly um, his bike started making some odd noises, and he thought it was one of the front wheel bearings that was bad. And uh, so I talked to him and asked him what the symptoms were and that type of thing. And it didn't seem to me like it was something that would be a bearing going bad in the front. For one thing, it's pretty much unheard of. And uh, the symptoms just didn't match. And uh, he lives about two and a half hours away, so he decided to throw it on the trailer and bring it here. And I told him if it was a bearing, uh, it wouldn't take long to fix it. And I would, you know, really do it for free because it's just part of my deal. When he got the bike here, um, I took it for a little test drive. And it growled pretty bad, but the noise was coming from the rear, not the front. And so I checked the pressure on the tire, and it's got an um, automotive tire on the back. And it was at 14 pounds, which is about 10 pounds under what it should have been. So I pumped it up to about 26, 27 pounds, took it for a ride, and it seemed a little better, but it still made noise and it just wasn't right. So we brought it in the shop here, and uh, Lifted it up on the on the rack here, got the wheel off the ground, spun it, and I could hear right away it was bearing noise from the differential. So his his uh, differential went bad, and uh, wouldn't you know it? About ten years ago, uh, I bought a differential from a trike builder that is probably about fifty miles away from here. So and and he had a bunch of them sitting around, and I gave him twenty bucks for one, and it sat on my uh, under my bench at home for ten years. And I told him, I just happened to have one, let me go get it. So I brought it in, uh, we checked it out, it was fine. Uh, checked the oil and it was fine. And uh, checked the oil on this one, which I already took part here. And the oil was fine, as far as level. But if you look at the oil, it's got kind of a pearl appearance to it. So you can tell that there's some metallic particles in there. And uh, there isn't much oil, as you can see. It's not. It's just enough for the ring gear to, to catch and to spin around in the housing. So there's very little oil that's actually in these things. And uh, you know, the first thing I told him, I think he's got about 65,000 miles on it. Never changed oil. And I said that's fine. I said you can. Uh, the oil was actually, aside from being uh, having metal particles, and it's fine. Uh, the pattern on the teeth is fine. Uh, actually, everything looks really good in this thing. And I took it apart, and as you can see, and this was my first, my first suspicion was the, uh, the pinion bearing was bad. But everything was nice and firm, which kind of surprised me. But this thing here, as you can hear, makes a noise. And uh, if you look at it, everything's intact. It looks really good. Uh, the cages are all there. The bearings are about a half inch apart. And this is about a five inch, six inch diameter bearing. Uh, typically these are uh, a quarter inch wide or three eighths of an inch wide. It's a single set. This is actually a pair. It's a dual. And as you can see here, there's a piece of the cage sticking out. Here's a piece of the cage sticking out. And see how the bearings are all in here. They're all conglomerated together. And then you've got blank spots in here, which is... And the noise it was making was typical, where it was kind of a pulsing grinding. And I said, that's usually from the bearings being loose and they're grouping up as this thing spins around. So this is a, a twin bearing um, in here, a dual race, and the inside race is bad. And uh, the pinion bearings, everything looked really good. Everything looks good on this thing except for this bearing. And uh, as you know, uh, there's been some talk about these things going bad, and I'm guessing the numbers are probably one in 500,000, maybe one in a million go bad. It's not very common. You hear about the ones that go bad, but you don't hear about all the ones that are perfectly fine. So I'd, I'd say this is extremely rare that this would go bad. And his just suddenly started making this noise. I'm guessing what happened, the, uh, the cage that's all scrambled here, uh, I'm guessing it's kind of like shifter forks, where uh, shifter, bent shifter forks aren't really a, a, a cause of a transmission problem. They're actually a symptom of something going wrong that bends the shifting forks. 
and I think what happened here is one of the ball bearings fractured and uh, it's just started rolling around in here and, and the cage actually is, the, is a victim of, of what's happening when, uh, when this thing self-destructs. And uh, this bearing probably would have totally failed within uh, another 50 or 100 miles is my guess. Um, but the rest of it looks good. I mean, you know, it's a really a heavy duty, solid piece of construction. And uh, this is a uh, probably about a six inch uh, uh, ring gear. You know, my truck has got a nine inch, you know, so it's pretty, pretty stout considering uh, it's a motorcycle. And uh, I got the pinion over here. And my opinion on the pinion is again, the, uh, the wear pattern is, is perfect. Everything's good on that. The bearing's nice and solid. And, uh, you know, it looks good. And, the, you know, the only thing I would say is definitely not the cause of this is oil. I mean, that's one of the first questions is every once in a while, often you change oil, what kind of oil to use, all this. Uh, the only thing with oil is that there has to be oil in there. It doesn't matter what you put in there or if you change it, if you don't change it, it doesn't matter. If these things go bad, they're going to go bad, uh, irregardless of uh, how many times you change oil. Um, so that's kind of my opinion on that. I've been around these things a long time and, and uh, I've actually uh, done a couple of gear sets in trucks and cars and stuff and I, I know how to do them wrong and how to do them right. You learn by doing them wrong. But uh, typically, uh, when a bearing like this goes bad, it's just a one of the balls will uh, will fracture, and it just totally destroys everything. Uh, there's a there's a roller bearing in here which goes on this end of the ring. That's perfectly fine. There's all kinds of lubrication in there, and they don't require much. Uh, that's the one thing about anything that's like transmissions and rear ends is. Uh, as long as there's oil, of oil film, they're fine. Uh, it doesn't have to really be drowning in oil or anything. And this one seems like it was well lubricated. There's a lot of oil throughout the housing and everything. And uh, I think everything was fine there. So as it turns out, it's just that large bearing. And this, this is junk now. This is just going to go in the trash. Because you can buy these sets for probably 50 bucks at most. And a lot of trike shops probably give them to you just to get rid of them and uh, I don't think I'll be investing in another one because like I say the chances of them going bad are pretty slim. So I'm going to take the gears and weld them together and make some kind of lawn art out of those and take the housing and throw that in the dumpster and that'll be the end of it. So anyway, anybody who's wondering uh, when these things go bad and how they go bad and that kind of thing, um, I would say the ones that do go bad, this is exactly the problem. It is this bearing that goes bad. Uh, I've seen uh, on some of the other bikes, like I say, it's a single and it's only four inches in diameter. This is about six inches. I don't know what that is in millimeters, but about six inches American, I would guess. And uh, when they go bad, this is what they do. And they just start making a lot of racket. And it's, you can definitely hear it at all speeds. And uh, that's the symptom. And if that ever happens, oh, you want to take it apart. As far as getting this thing out of there, uh, I would have to say we had a fair share of vulgarities uh, during the disassembly and probably about half as many with the reassembly in reverse order. And, uh, you know, other than that, it, it really wasn't too bad to get it out of there. You got to take the back tire off. You got to take the, uh, the right muffler off. Uh, took the saddlebag loose because you got to get some of the bolts in there. Um, so you want to do some disassembly. And getting the muffler off was kind of a, a two-manded job or in, in some uh, swearing involved in that. But, uh, and then getting this back in, there's a, there's a short shaft that sticks in here which sticks out about six inches. And you have to line that up with the, uh, the female end of the drive shaft. And that took me about five tries to get it in there. And the thing's really awkward. Uh, you almost have to do it on the lift. You can't. Boy, doing it laying on the ground would be tough. But uh, we managed to get it back together. Going together actually wasn't too bad. And uh, if I did it one, I think we'd take some shortcuts and probably get it done a lot faster. This is the first gold wing I've done. So anyway, hopefully that'll uh, give you some info and a little bit of insight on 
if and when these rare things happen. Okay, a little more info here. I got it all torn apart, and uh, it turns out these are back-to-back -back bearings. I thought it was maybe a, a dual race bearing, which is uh, not that uncommon. But this is actually uh, two different bearings. You can see they're rather, you know, they're large. Uh, this one's real good. Nothing wrong with this one at all. It rolls nice and free. And uh, this one here, you know, as, as I said before, if you look, it's, uh, it's kind of mangled. And I know when this uh, first came up, it was my uh, guess that these, uh, this ring, inside ring, would fracture and cause the bearings to disintegrate, but that's not the case. So, uh, like I say, I'm just guessing that the bearing just happened to, uh, to fracture, but it's hard to say what really happened. Here's some fragments of the cage here that came out. So there's bits and pieces. World's largest snap ring. That was kind of a trickster to get out of there. Uh, pinion. There's a bearing that goes on this end, which is in the housing area. Threw those in the garbage. That's just fine. Very heavy duty uh, bearing on the other end, and that's smooth as silk. So this can get welded together here, probably like that. And that's going to be uh, that's going to be a mechanical version of some sort of spaceship that's going to sit in my uh, my garden. And. Uh, there's an oil seal that came out of it and then a ring that holds some of that together. If you ever uh, break a stud off on one of these guys, I can tell you right now, your best bet is to get a different differential because getting the studs out if you break them off requires this kind of disassembly or pretty close to it. Uh, the studs are actually uh, uh, threaded on both ends so they're actually screwed in and I'm sure they're Loctited in there really good. And uh, if you break it off, it's probably gonna break off you know, fairly, uh, it's going to break off like right in here somewhere and it's going to be hard to grab a hold of that and get it out of there. So I'm guessing it might be wise just to, to get another uh, differential for, you know, 50 bucks or whatever you can get one for and swap it out. And uh, breaking those bolts off, I've heard of people doing it and I don't know why. Uh, what I use I use an impact wrench, it's what is common and is perfectly fine. This is a torque stick, this one here is 80 foot-pounds. So this will put 80 foot-pounds with an impact wrench, and that's as far as she goes. This is uh, what you want to use. You don't want to tighten these things by hand. Uh, people tend to over tighten everything, and uh, I think that's the biggest issue is, is everything is good and tight, which means it's you know fractured or stripped. And um, you know, just use a torque stick. That works really good. You can get those on eBay. Get them just at any auto parts store has them. And uh, they really do the trick and save you a, a lot of pain and heartache in the future. So anyway, that's the end of this. We'll make some garden art and call this one good.